Statistics and Excel, binomial distribution, multiple X drive to work in traffic example. Got data? Let's get stuck into it with Statistics and Excel. You're not first a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant because apparently we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Required to, but if you have access to OneNote, we're on the icon left hand side, OneNote presentation, 1570 binomial distribution, multiple X drive to work in traffic example tab. We're also uploading transcripts to OneNote so that you can go into the view tab, immersive reader tool, change the language if you so choose, be able to then either read or listen to the transcript in multiple different languages, tying into the video presentations with the timestamps. OneNote desktop version here in prior presentations, we've been thinking about how we can represent different data sets, both numerically with numbers such as the average or mean, median quartiles, and pictorially using tools such as the box and whiskers and histogram, noting that the histogram is generally the tool that we visualize when thinking about the spread of data, and then we can describe the spread of the data on a histogram using terminology such as it's skewed to the left or it's skewed to the right. We're now looking for those mathematical equations representing curves that sometimes can approximate actual data sets in real life depending on the scenario. And if they can, we would like to be able to do so because those curves can give us more predictive power about whatever it is the data set is working with. This time we're going to be looking with a binomial type of distribution. We looked at the conditions for a binomial distribution, one of them being that we would have to be able to organize our information into a, uh, a success or fail situation, such as a coin flip, having a success or a fail defined as success possibly being heads, fail being tails. We talked about a sales call situation where for every call, the success would be if you got a sale, the fail would be if you didn't. We're not talking about gradients of success in this case, right? We can't really, we can't say, well, we got a sale of a 200 item versus a hundred dollar item. We have to define it as either success or fail. So there's a lot of other scenarios where this could take place, which might not be obvious as first. So here's another example. N equals the, per the number of fixed trials, which are going to be drives to work. So we're driving to work. We're going to say five times. That's going to be our fixed trials. The probability of success, meaning success in this case, we're defining as no traffic. So when we're driving to work, if there's traffic, it's not a success. If there's no traffic, success. Now, again, there's no gradients here. We're not saying, well, there's a medium amount of traffic versus a high red zone traffic versus a yellow zone traffic. No, we're saying either binomial traffic, no traffic, no traffic, success, traffic, uh, not a success. And unfortunately, there's only a 12% likelihood that we're going to have a no traffic situation. So then X is going to be the number of times no traffic out of five. So in other words, we're trying to see what's the likelihood that we get three drives to work with no traffic out of the five drives uh, to work, which is going to be fairly low, you would expect, given the fact that 12% uh, likelihood per drive that we're going to have a, a traffic free experience. Okay, so if we were to uh, do our binomial distributions, X equals the number of times no traffic out of five. So here is our equation. Now remember, there's actually two of them with the binomial, so which is a little bit different than some of the other distributions like the Poisson distribution. The latest one, as we talked about before, is this range one. 
uh, which which has more flexibility, but it also can be a little bit confusing sometimes. So it might be easier to use since the other one is closer to the Poisson, the other one. So we'll look at both of them. So this equals binome dot dist dot range. And then we're picking up the trials, which are going to be five, the probability per individual trial, the 12% probability of success. And then the number we're looking for is three out of the five. That's what these numbers represent. And that gives us our 1.34%. So the likelihood that we get three days out of five that have no traffic, given the fact that each individual day, we only have a 12% success rate, meaning no traffic is only the 1.35. We need a new job for crying out loud or maybe move closer or something. It's just ridiculous. I mean, I'm wasting half my day in the car. I try to listen to tapes, but it's just so it's hard to focus. Anyways, the number of times, uh, so we can also do it using this formula equals the binome dot dist. So this is similar to the to the Poisson one where we have the numbers is a, a similar argument up top, the trials that we have similar argument. Uh, but then we've got the cumulative versus non cumulative. So we got the numbers, we got the trials, we've got the probability. And then we've got this last bit over here, which is cumulative or non cumulative. Now that allows you to say, ask a question such as what's the likelihood not simply that I get three, but uh, from anywhere from like zero to three or something like that it will cum it'll take a cumulative uh, impact, but it's more difficult to pick something in the middle, right? Whereas the binome dot dist dot range allows you to have the multiple arguments on this last argument. So it can allow you to do uh, a calculation of something like in the middle, like two, like if I was to say, what's the likelihood that I have like two to three days. So I'll, we'll give a, a little bit more of, of an explanation of that here. So let's imagine that we're saying that P is equal to two. So I could use uh, the binome dot dist dot range, which has the arguments, the trials, the probability, and the numbers, the number now being two out of uh, the five instead of the three out of the five, we could use an argument of uh, the binome dot dist argument, which now it has the, the two up front. Uh, I'm just typing in uh, the two because the order of the of the arguments are different orders, but it's the same basic arguments. And then the trials and then the probability. And then we have whether it's cumulative or not. In this case, we're going to say it's not cumulative because we're looking for exactly uh, the two. So those two, both of them are fairly equal in terms of the in terms of the ease of the argument. And we can also if we were to plot out our data this way, we can this is often a useful tool to plot out the data, meaning we can say what if the chances of X are being from one up to five? And then we can plot out our data. And for this, we're using the binome.dist.range. You could use the other binome.dist as well. But this range function gives you an array function, which makes it a little bit easier to enter something like this. Because to it enter this into the system, we're going to say that the number of trials uh, that we have is going to be, once again, the five. I made it absolute so we can copy it down to the range. The probability of uh, success is going to still be the 12. And then we have the numbers, which is going to be this array. That's what this stands for with the hashtag. And this will just be a spill array, which will give us the results. So the probability that we have zero days is quite high. So because re remember that we had a 12% likelihood that we don't get traffic. So it's a high likelihood that we do get traffic. So that means that to have zero days of traffic free, a traffic free week is not is, is still not uh, is likely that we, we don't get any traffic free time. And, so, and then what if we get one day of traffic free day, 35.98%, two days of traffic freeness, 9.81%, three days, 1.34, and so on. If we plot this, it looks something uh, like this. 
And if I was to compare that to, to calculating just for the for p equaling two, I can then say uh, I can then find it right here, right? P equals two, which is this nine point eight one. All right. If we do another one, I'm going to say that this time p is going to be less than or equal to two. Okay, less than or equal to two. So we can do that a couple different ways. I can say, all right, I can look up here and go less than or equal to two, meaning I'm going to include the two. So I could say, well, it should be 552.77 plus 35.98 plus 9.81, 98. Uh, so we get to that, that uh, 98.56. That's the one way we can get there. That's the result. Or we could say, binome dot dist dot range and we enter the trials the probabilities and then uh the numbers and now i'm picking up two numbers and this is going to be the more flexibility of the dot range i'm not saying it's cumulative we're we're picking up those two numbers and we could list those numbers this way if we were to list the upper and lower limits the lower limit now is zero because it's that's as far down as we can go and the upper limit is up to and including two and those and that's what's being included in this argument we can also use the binome dot dist which still works pretty good because i got the numbers the trials uh the the probability and then we have to have the added argument to say do you want this one number or do you want the cumulative in this case we're going to put a one which represents the cumulative, which basically does the same way thing we did up top, which, which sums it up that way. So what if we had an argument of X is less than or equal to one? Well, if it's less than or equal to one, I could use my summing format. I can go up here and say, all right, well, less than or equal to one means it would be up here of 52.77 plus 35.98 likelihood which comes out to 8875. So we can use that method. And it, or I can use the binome.dist.range trials probability and then the numbers. And now we've got the, the two numbers that we're putting in place. And if I look at it in terms of my ranges here, it's going to be zero goes down to zero on the lower limit and goes up to and including one. And then the cumulative still works quite well here because now I can just say it's the numbers, the trials, the probability, and then I'm going to just say it's cumulative instead of zero, which is, which is non-cumulative. So both of those seem pretty comparable, but, th but then, so now this one, I, if I go X is greater than or equal to two, well, so now I've got to say, okay, if it's greater or equal to two, now I'm going uh, from from two down. So that would be, you would think, 9.81 plus 1.34 plus 0 0.09. And then this one is too small to count. So 11.2425 about. And so I can do that. I can do that with that summing way. I can do it with a binome.dist.range. The argument being the trials, the probability, and then I'm looking at this range, which sometimes it's nice to put in a table, the lower bit of the range being two, and then we're going from two up to five. Now here's where the, the older one runs into, is a little bit more difficult, right? Because now if I say, well, what if I do that with the same format that we had with the Poisson, which has this cumulative argument, instead of being able to put these two numbers for X, right what how am i going to do that because i i want to go from two up to five and the cumulative only goes from zero up so what i would have to do then is do the cumulative thing up to five and then subtract out the cumulative up to uh two or one whichever one i'm trying to include here so in other words what am i including it's it's uh greater than or equal to two so greater than or equal to two. So that means the lower limit uh, is two and the upper limit is going to be five. Two is gonna be included. So you have to do something like this if you wanted to just calculate it with that old binome.dist. You'd have to say, okay, binome.dist, numbers, trials, probability, 
and then uh, cumulative minus binome dot dist to subtract out that first half of the curve. Uh, and you got, and so this is where it gets a little bit more messy. And this is where that range function or one area of that range function works well. Let's do one more here and then we'll take a look at another format. Uh, hold on, I deleted the wrong thing. Let's see, let's delete this. All right, so now it needs to be X is just greater than two, not greater than or equal to, just to notice that subtlety here, because now we're saying it's not the lower limit is at three because we're not including the two. So from three up to five. So if I did that up here, I can say, okay, so it's greater than two, but not equaling two. So that means it's gonna be the 1.34 plus 0.09 or uh, 1.43 about. And I can do that by adding it up. I can do that by the binome.dist.range where the last argument are gonna be the last two arguments are the three and the five. Or if I use the old format, again, it's a little bit long because I'd have to say binome.dist up to the five minus the binome.dist to, to, to take out the uh, first bit up to, up to and including the one, but not the two, right? So it gets a little bit messy. So we do that in Excel if you want to practice doing that in Excel. Note also the, the binome.dist.range also has that spill uh, that spill capacity. So if you were to set up your lower and upper ranges for a set of questions like this, then it becomes quite easy to use the spill feature in a binome.dist.range as opposed to the to the cumulative because you can then set up your lowers and your uppers. You can go binome.dist.range, put in your uh, trials, your probabilities, and then uh, and then the numbers are going to be these two ranges. So now I just, for the numbers, instead of having two and two and, and zero and two, I select this range and then this range, and that will then spill down the results. So that's another reason why this binome.range is a little bit more flexible. But oftentimes to me, I like to build something like this and, and, and uh, you can do this fairly easily with either uh, of the the functions so so that's another example and just to note that this example might not be as intuitive right but but because traffic example versus a coin flip probably comes to mind when you're talking about a binomial kind of thing at least it does for me but there's a lot of things that you might be able to put you know that you might actually be able to put into a category of success or non-success and have a similar type of scenarios